These double daggers tend to be grouped in that concealed weapons category. Hide up your sleeve or inside your coat or something and then pull them out and defend yourself if needed. In this video, I'm gonna be talking all about the Shaolin double daggers we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history, how they've got into Kung Fu, who uses them nowadays, and at the end, I'm going to put together a short montage of people training with the Double Daggers. Hi, my name's Doug Swift. I've been doing martial arts for the past 34 years, and I've been the owner of Enzo Martial Arts for the past 17 years. If you're liking this video, remember to click the little icon, subscribe to this channel, and get videos on all of the products here at Enzo Martial Arts. So let's get into this video and learn all about the double daggers we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. So on the website, I have called these Shaolin double daggers. It's mainly in Shaolin Kung Fu or like very closely related styles that use these. You do also see them in Wushu in general as well. And I'm sure they pop up in lots of other Kung Fu styles all across China. But in the majority, it is Shaolin that are known for using these Shaolin styles, Wushu, the stars that are closely related to Shaolin don't use these. So I've called them Shaolin Double Daggers because that is the majority of the market for us. But, you know, you're not allowed to have a go at me if your style uses them because, yeah, like I say, that is the most common style that will use these Double Daggers. Now, there are lots of martial arts styles. Like There are some Korean styles that use single dagger, but they are very different to this. You know, they'll be much more like, say, something like this type of dagger that they will train with and do their forms with. So this specific style of dagger, like I said, is mostly known within Wushu and Shaolin. So in Shaolin, there's kind of different uh, categories of weapon. You have the long weapons, like the sticks and the, and the bondales. You have the flexible weapons. You also have like concealed weapons. Now, these double daggers are, tend to be grouped in that concealed weapons category. And, you know, there's loads of like obscure weapons in there, like chopsticks. Um, and there's also other stuff like uh, rope darts, nine section whips, um, like the Erme piercers that we sell, like these ones. Um, they all kind of fall into the concealed weapon category. Now, the general sort of feeling goes with these, or general sort of history buffs, tend to say that there was loads of times in China where there was lots of bandits. So people going out, if it was monks going out into the villages, they are having to get round all the bandits and, and things like that. So they have to protect themselves. Now, at times you might not be able to carry weapons or you might not want to be seen that you're carrying a weapon. So something like these double daggers are something that you could hide up your sleeve or inside your coat or something and then pull them out and defend yourself if needed. There was also lots of times in China when people were moving money around. So you had like bodyguards and protection services protecting money for the banks being moved around here, there and everywhere. And they would hire bodyguards, which would also like protect, you know, the people and the money on those trips. Now these bodyguards would tend to have like big weapons that would look really spectacular, but almost certainly they would have smaller stuff concealed on their person. So if they lost their big, big weapon, then they could use little ones as well. Quite common in lots of kind of different armies and different, um, different kind of fighting styles, protection services all over the world to have these smaller weapons. And this is generally what, how these sort of double daggers and this type of like fighting style and these forms and stuff came into Kung Fu. I went to Ping Yao a few years back and that had, that was a big base for the banks in China. And they did have these kind of homes where all the bodyguards would, would eat and sleep and train as well. And they had training yards as part of that. It was a pretty cool place to go. So yeah, this is kind of generally what's thought of how something like this, very simple knife, would merge into the martial arts. Bodyguards were training with their big weapons and also little weapons. And then over time, these Kung Fu styles developed and got merged into different styles. Shaolin tends to be one of those Kung Fu styles where it's pulled in a lot of different things from all over China. 
So yeah, lots of weapons, lots of different forms from all over the place, all grouped into one style. And that's kind of how Shaolin has got such kind of a wealth and spread of forms and weapons. So just having a quick look at the double dagger, they're pretty, pretty simple in design. There's not a huge amount to them. Nice and simple, which is why they're relatively cheap as well, which is good. Now they are made out of a single sheet of metal which is it's chromed on the outside so they it's just like standard sheet like mild steel metal and they dip it in copper which sticks to it and then they dip it in chrome so you get a nice chrome effect all the way around it which makes it nice and shiny and easy to polish it also as long as you don't get any nicks on it and get down to the steel underneath it won't rust which is actually really really good so it was, as long as you look after them, keep them dry, keep them looked after, no dinks or whatever, then it will stay rust free for the entirety of its life, which is a really, really good feature. Now the thing that stands them apart from other daggers is this ring on the back. So you get this loop on the end of the knife, which has like, this one's got two rings on it. So, you know, sometimes I have more or less, um, but that is a feature of the ring and it does rattle and make a load of noise. Now, there is loads and loads of theories about rings on weapons, and I've talked about them before in other videos. Something like the nine ring broadsword like this, which has loads of rings all the way down the edge of it. And the rope darts, they also, and the chain whips, they have lots of sort of extra unnecessary rings, if you, if you want to call them that, attached to them. Now, there's loads of theories about why these rings exist, and you know, there doesn't seem to be anything that's that set in stone. Some of the theories is that they're like a distraction. Uh, some could be like people that added rings as sort of like trophies in a way or like certain awards or whatever achievements. Um, other people say these rings exist for like hooking up other people's swords or hooking up fingers or whatnot. There's loads of different theories, but nothing's that concrete. And I haven't actually heard any type of theory that's really made sense over all the other theories. So yeah, loads of theories swimming around on the rings, but they're pretty standard now in a lot of Shaolin Wushu weapons, and they are very good for making noise, and they do sort of help with that spectacle when you're doing demonstrations and competitions, and just to make the thing more spectacular, make it more noisy, and uh, yeah, more interesting to look at for sort of general punters. Now on this, on the flat sheet metal blade, you do get a hand wrap. Uh, this one's red and blue and white. They do vary, you do get like blue and white ones and blue wraps, they do vary over time. So these are the double daggers that we currently get in stock, but they do change a little bit. Like I said, the rings can change and also the wrapping can change. The shape of them tends to be pretty standard. I don't think I've seen any other double daggers like a different shape. But yeah, they can just, just vary slightly in quality and the price will vary on the website as much as possible. We will do our absolute best to keep up the images on the website so it's exactly what you get. Sometimes it might vary just a little bit. So if you, you, know, you have a very, very specific choice of like the product that you wanna get from us, maybe just give us a call or an email just to check it's exactly that. But like I say, the most thing that will change is the color of the wrap. So just having a look at the dimensions of the double daggers only a few measurements just so you know exactly what you're getting you're looking around just over 11 inches or 28 and a half centimeters in terms of the width of the blade you're going in somewhere around three centimeters for the width now as mentioned through this video we like to think we've got a pretty good selection of kung fu concealed weapons so as well as the double daggers, we also have the aforementioned Hermé piercers. We have really good quality rope darts. We do three different weights, lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight chain whips. And the pretty rare and pretty hard to use double meteor hammers. Now, definitely not really Kung Fu related, but definitely concealed weapon. The very, very popular black telescopic nunchucks. So as promised at the beginning of the video, here's a short montage of people training and competing with the double daggers.
Thanks very much for watching. I hope it was useful. I hope you learned loads on the double daggers we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and get all the videos on all of the products here at Enzo Martial Arts. And we're making more and more all the time. So go there for the latest updates. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.